Hi, everybody. Russ and my Hammers 11 were outside today because I've been banished outside because my wife's watching some Australian reality TV show. My daughter's watching YouTube in the front room. So I'm outside today, which is nice. Um, hope everyone is well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. So you made a rare time to put new content on. Um, we've got our charity event coming up next Thursday night at 8 o'clock in the UK. So make sure you uh, you watch that and donate to the, the charities. And obviously, we're doing stuff with Isla Fire and the um, and Steve Grieger's Hammers 11 prints as well. So make sure you keep an eye out for that as well. Um, that's all that done. Lovely. Um, today's guest uh, another one of our lovely Scandinavian hammers, um, all the way from Sweden. It's Jesper Nilsson. Hi, Jesper. How are you? Hello, Ross. I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I am not too bad. It's been a long week, to be honest. So, but you know, work-wise, but we're, we're getting there. And um, yeah, and you know, the excitement of the of the um, of the of the fixture list has come out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's it's always... exciting. Well, it's not exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting yeah. to about. <laughs> nine eight fifty nine and then nine o'clock when it came down we go yeah yeah exactly i sat uh, on my work actually and just wanted it to come <laughs> and then and then you're thinking because i i got a text through about eight o'clock saying newcastle's the first game through you know through obviously sort of the stuff i do at the club and i was like oh, i fancy that that's a good first game that's all right yeah. i like that yeah. and then especially to see the since, next sorry go on there you go you carry okay. on man yeah especially since the last the six seven seasons where we just met the top clubs it feels like we actually have a good chance of winning we do and then <laughs> and then you look at the next <laughs> the, the of six, two months six, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous it's ridiculous <laughs> it's crazy it's absolutely crazy um but and then and then obviously you look at the first month and then you look at the last month. You go, okay, yeah. well, who have we got to beat to stay up? And May's not bad. We haven't got a bad no. running in May. All no, things considered. No, no, no. Um, it, it looks really good. And uh, Southampton at home at last game could be, could be crucial. <laughs> It could be crucial. I'm hoping it's crucial, Jesper, for a, a European place rather yes, than yes, a relegation obvious. spot. <laughs> but, yes, uh, yeah. of course. My blind optimism has somewhat taken a little bit of a dip since I nine like, o'clock. But, but I like it. We should be optimistic. At least, yeah. at least until it uh, fucks up. It has not. Oh, sorry for swearing, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it hasn't done yet. Isn't that? Yeah. No, it that's hasn't why we are excited now and not depressed. Yeah, we are. We are excited at the moment, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I think there's. Um, yeah, and and we, in the UK, obviously, it's a big thing. We've got Boxing Day at home, the twenty sixth, yeah. which is a big thing. It's the first one since we've moved um, to yeah. the Olympics at London Stadium. Um, unfortunately, I think we'll have anywhere near a full capacity crowd by then. But um, that's nice. And and also, what's nice is um, we haven't got a New Year's Day game. We always tend to have a New Year's Day home game, and we haven't got that this year. So that's quite nice. So I can have a beer New Year's Eve, which is lovely. Um, oh, oh my, my security lights coming. I'm going to have to turn it off in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's nice. I'm looking forward to that. But um, yeah, and the, the, the all the friendlies are starting. It seems we've only just been stopped for a couple of weeks, and the friendlies start yeah. next Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're playing two teams at the same time yeah. next Ipswich Tuesday. And... Wickham, yeah, I, I think, I, isn't I was it? The, Wickham and Ipswich, wasn't it? Something like that, or Wickham and Luton. Yeah, it's yeah, like two. Yeah. I, I was a bit uh, confused when I saw they were playing at the same time, but <laughs> me <laughs> too. We need it. <laughs> me too. I was I was looking at it, going, you know, I, I know social distancing is bad, yeah, but that's ridiculous. You're know, playing two teams <laughs> at the same time, but uh, we'll see what we'll happens. It, but yeah, we we'll take it to new levels. Exactly. I didn't think we had a big enough squad to split the team in two, but um, <laughs> hey, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I suppose a lot of kids <laughs> will be playing in one of them, but we'll see. We were all fooled. Yeah, we were fooled indeed. But, but, but uh, I think, actually, I think, speaking of it, the squad depth, I think we need a couple of signings this summer. Of course we do. Of course we do. We, we, we know we know we do. I, I think, but I think in terms yeah. of squad depth, I think the issue is I think we're going to be having to sell to replenish. Um, by the sounds of it, I don't think yeah. we're going to add to the squad. Yeah, I think we have so. To, so um, uh, I think we'll see. There's obviously loads of rumours going for as yeah. long as as long as one person doesn't go, Mr. Rice. I'm I'm yeah. not too fussed if anyone else. You know, I'm not too fussed if obviously you know Anderson's gone. I'm not too fussed with him. Diop no. mm, a little bit, but I think you'd reinvest that quite well that money. Yeah, but I like Diop. I yeah, I do like him. Real, little match potential. 
Mm. Oh, definitely. Then he wasn't definitely. our best centre back. It was a Bona, but he has he has ability, and I think yeah. we should try to keep him. We should try and keep him, but I think um, if it's if if it means yeah. that we have to, we keep Declan Rice and, yeah, and we sell him. Exactly, and we sell it, and maybe exactly, and sell Diop, maybe reinvest it, maybe get Duffy from from Brighton. Yeah. You know, maybe a, a I good, think he would be decent. Yeah, I think he would, and then maybe you've got money left to go out and buy Rico Henry from Brentford or Ollie. What you know, you it's. Yeah. I think that's how we're going to grow the squad. I mean, there's not many of our players who are going to command a, a sizable fee. Do you know what I mean? I mean, no, no, no. Know, no. Obviously, Hugo, not. two million Diop, pounds. Like Anderson, you know, it's like Alar. Yes, yeah. But, but we need to mention them. Bowen and Sorsek come in January. Brilliant signings. Yeah, of course. Brilliant. And that, and that's the way we have to. And that's the way we have to yeah. work with our transfer budget. Um, yeah, exactly. We have. It has to be that. It has to be. We can't. We have had, had our sort of. Um, if our feet burn, spending forty million pounds on a player, um, and thirty-eight. Yeah. No, obviously not. <laughs> well, but, and, I mean, and perhaps on, it's not on. all bad. No. Because no, um, um, Felipe Anderson was wasn't a record signing, and uh, he was. Of course, did some great things, but he hasn't been uh, exciting. No, and I think he's suffered from since restart. I don't think Moyes fancies him really as a player, no, by the looks of it. So. You know, um, I think if you're I looking mean, for that impact player, someone like Yarmolenko is more yeah. suited to Moyes. He, he clearly likes him. He has a, a bit of an out of itch about him, Yarmolenko, and yeah. and obviously we know what he did to Arnie. So. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, but no. that is interesting. We have got good players. Yeah, we do. We've got a good squad. We have a good squad. And 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 what I like about our squad this year, compared to many other years, is it looks like we've got a, we can score a goal. You know, very. Yeah. You know, I. You know, I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, some uh, sort of towards the end of Slavens and Pellegrini as well. You know, we looked a bit lightweight. We didn't look like. Yeah. When we've got a corner, it's like, well, we're not, you know, we've got yeah. some presence now. We seem yeah. to you know, be taking long throw-ons. You know, someone like Suchek has revolutionised the way we're yeah. playing. Um, and even it gives Declan more, yeah. more room to go forward and 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 sort of and, and sort of do less of the donkey work because Suchek's yeah. doing that now. So yeah. it's... Um, okay. I, I, it's, it's, I mean, the, I mean, I think this year, you know, I think uh, the, the only slight concern I have this year is is the goalkeeper situation, really, because yeah. uh, someone pointed out to me the other day, you know, Fabianski's 35, 36 now, something like that. Yeah. Although he's playing well, although, you know, he was, uh, the effect he had, you know, getting injured last year fucked up our season completely yes. and fucked up Pellegrini's career, you know, management career. We were third of the United yeah. game in September. And exactly. Then he got injured against Bournemouth and the, the rest is history. Exactly. So, and then you look at the replacements, you've got, you know, Roberto, bless, bless him, still there. He's, he's late, mid to late 30s. David Martin, mid to late 30s. I think Randolph's probably the, the spring chicken at 32 yeah. 33 yeah so um yeah it's uh no. that's the only thing i'm worried about a little bit yeah, also, yes I, I agree i would love to give joseph anang a, re, a proper yeah chance, but yeah, obviously yeah. he's not ready yet what is he 17 18 yeah well, there's two of them it's him and trot as well as in trot they both yeah. went out on loan yeah, and, he, he um, is also interesting though uh, but yeah. uh, perhaps they have never been able to prove themselves at this level no, we say goalkeeper's a bit different, isn't it? I think you know. Yes. I, I was talking to this with another guy the other day when he was doing his sort of gold. It was my best mate. He was doing his gold oldies, and it was like all players who have made their debut for West Ham aged thirty and above, and and he reeled off the goalkeepers that had made their debut at thirty, and and it was pretty pretty much every goalkeeper we've had in the last sort of ten years. So you, you don't get that young. I think the, our youngest yeah. keeper since is probably Stephen Bywater. Yeah. Yeah, it was like nineteen. I wasn't then. too old though. No, he wasn't. But he was like. But it's it's very unusual for a a young goalkeeper to break into the first team. Do you know what I mean? Centre yes, back, yes, Declan Rice. I, I agree. I, I totally agree with you. But but mm. uh, when, and the goalkeepers often is as best uh, when they are when they're mm. being thirty. Yeah. 
no it is it's true and that's their prime isn't it so about yeah. 30 that's when their yeah. prime is you know most most midfielders and, and, and most players about 26 27 is their prime yeah. isn't it for a, but goalkeepers a bit older isn't it and defenders yeah, a little yeah. bit older than that it's probably so. about 30 as well so <laughs> it's quite funny well, so. probably. well we'll say we'll wait and see anyway anyway just yeah. 10 minutes into the video i'm going to ask the first question um oh. <laughs> the question that I always ask everyone is, and particularly for our foreign-based hammers, yeah. is is why West Ham? Why is West Ham your club? That is a really interesting question. Uh, honestly, I often get that question, both in yeah. Sweden, because <laughs> West Ham is not the team uh, Swedish football, uh, football guy supports. It's over Man United, Liverpool, or something like that, but I'm mm. West Ham, and it's it's because of the youth academy okay. i loved all the great players coming from the youth rank modern times since i'm born 92 joe cole michael carrick or real Ferdinand, i loved it but yeah. the club this wasn't just gained so much from from the potential of the, those players yeah, yeah the club had gained very little and i felt the club is genuine the club wants mm. they have a they have a loyal fan base who always goes to the stadium never mind if they're playing premier league or they're playing championship the club yeah. crowd rejoices and i loved it and i could yeah. identify much more with west ham than any other club oh, and that's the short history <laughs> and 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 do you get over much to see west ham live or yeah yeah, yeah. i try yeah. it depends on my money or of course other stuff uh, like work or something but i try to go every year oh also. fantastic every year and um, yeah so i try to go over. I, I was last uh, trip was actually man united in september oh brilliant oh fantastic mm. oh that yeah. was good i, lo that I love fun. it yeah and it's and it's and for and and and, and i think that the great thing about about particularly the foreign based hammers is they just have because i think because obviously yeah i live yeah 20 minutes away you know i i don't feel like i think you know for, for guys like yourselves you haven't got that closeness proximity so you're even more fanatical that's the way i see it. and that's i can speak it's time. something about that yeah i really think uh, so uh, yeah it can be good and it's obviously you and obviously we've had german on here as well and yeah, you know whether yeah, it's the american guys or whether it's the indian yeah. hammers and yeah. they just have this fanaticism and it's it's um and that's why i love interviewing the the the, yeah. the, the, the guys outside of, of the uk really outside yeah. of england to be fair because they just have so much more because and and obviously when you go when you go to the game you yeah. take so much more out of it because someone yeah. who's every minute get older. every second yeah for yeah. you it's week in week out for me yeah. it's once in a year or once in two years and it's yeah. so big for me to see you my uh, lovely hammers yeah i want to, to enjoy every minute every second of course of course and <laughs> obviously and also being part of like you know the the family and and, yeah. and being and being there as well it must be and because everyone's every, everyone's you know because you're a west ham fan doesn't matter where you come from everyone's you're part of the gang aren't you really and yeah. everyone will make you feel so homely and yeah. so welcome yeah everyone loves it it is it was, it's lovely it was the fella i met at the cow you know the pub yeah, the yeah, yeah. Then he just did you came all the way from sweden for this one game oh my <laughs> god that is a true support can i shake your hand and i, I just <laughs> loved it it was against huddersfield in 2017 you know the, oh, home, wow. the first home game of the season Monday evening. Oh wow! Yeah, that's the thing. Even more so, being in like an evening game and stuff as well. But yeah, I must admit, I don't think I. And I think that game, I couldn't attend that game. Actually, saying that, I wasn't there because I was at <laughs> conference in in Holland at the time. But oh. uh, yeah, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, I just think you get so much more out of it. I think we get a bit bl not blasé, but I think we get a bit used to going on a Saturday. Yes. Yes. Although not now, not now, because obviously you know no. there's no. I think when, when everyone gets back, it'd be, exactly. I think when everyone, I think everyone will appreciate appreciate it a lot more when they can go back. Yeah. And everyone's back. God forbid, whenever that'll be. But yeah. it's um, and then obviously, you know, you, and you guys can come start, come back over again, and yeah, and, uh, and you'll, we'll all feel the same as you do because it'll be like yeah. you know so unusual for us to be in a live in a live game. But um, no, it's brilliant. It's yeah. brilliant. Um, 
what's what's it like you know i mean do you are you, are you part of the the scandinavian hammers group themselves yes and, and particularly i'm part of i can show you actually oh brilliant yeah can you see it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. West yeah. Time that's, sweden that's sweet that's that's right that is sweden i can yeah i can uh, translate we we are kind of the same thing as the scandinavian yeah. hammers but uh, we are the under group Ah, oh, yeah, the yeah I, I'm in the border of the Western fan Sweden, so that, oh, that's fantastic. sort of my fan, fan base. But of course, we have a company with Scandinavian yes. Hammers as well. Yeah, of course. And how many are there on the on the Swedish group? Oh, roughly, pay members. I think we're a couple of hundreds. Wow, it, I think it's a thousand to follow our Facebook page. Brilliant. So everyone, you who see this, go and check yeah. it out. Go and check the, fa um, yeah, yeah, the Swedish Hammers Facebook page, definitely. Yeah. And, and a couple um, of that, that's brilliant. And uh, I think it about, uh, perhaps oh. uh, total supports West Ham in Sweden. I, can, I can't no, know. No, I just can't know. No, uh, know. A couple of thousands, obviously. Yeah, I think outside I mean, the that's... top six clubs, I think uh, we're one of the biggest. Perhaps mm. uh, we, Everton and Newcastle at the same level. Yeah, that would make sense because it's, it's it's by sort of, you, you you imagine that would probably be right off of the top six. Um, yeah. That's brilliant. You know, a couple of hundred. Uh, that's fantastic. I like it. And that's, and that's what surprises me, you know, like, you know, it's just how our, how big our fan base is outside of, of of Essex, really, of London, really. You know, it's, you yeah. know, I, I, <laughs> yeah. it's quite... Yeah. And many people just, but you're from, you're not from London. How can you from West Ham? How can you, how, why? And I, and I love the question. And people almost apologize for asking. And, yeah. and I like to ask, ask. I yeah. answer. I love it. And, and I think yeah. one reason many people like West Ham is Iron Maiden. Steve Harris. Yeah. He's a really big, he's a really, really big. Oh, I, wow. I think that's uh, some particular reason or just the metal metal heads who like football yeah 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 and and obviously steve harris over there you know helping everyone yeah, yeah. All these. And also when they, when they released the iron maiden west ham top as well. yeah i loved it loved that it was, that was quite cool but uh yeah no, i can get that i can get that it's like i remember in um i used to go and see i used to go and again we we die we diverge as always on this channel um i used to go and see status quo quite a lot over christmas oh. and they've got a massive following in holland and oh, yeah. uh netherlands and they all and and and, 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 and obviously status quo are all man or they were all man united fans and so i think because of that there's a huge in the same way that a lot of swedish fans have have warmed of iron maiden fans have worn to west ham a lot of man united fans have warned because they were because yeah. of status quo you know it's like the yeah, effect. probably yeah i suppose a couple of ways this fellas follow follow some man city and some yeah. liverpool follow uh, some beatles fans follow liverpool etc yeah, yeah. etc well, it's it's very intertwined, isn't it? Music and yeah, football. It just, yeah, but everyone has has the, the different stories, haven't they? Yeah, and you get that everyone has, and that that's why I always ask everyone their story because yeah, everyone's slightly course. differently. Even people who say I was born into it, there'll be a twist of of you know everyone has this unique reason why it might yeah. be yeah. their mum or their dad or yeah, or. Exactly. You know, like that you know and um i mean i was always born i was born into it there was no chance yeah, you know, either yeah. side of my family had it so um i've always actually had my father supports man united so i'm glad that yeah. i wasn't defended by him <laughs> well you had a lot more success yes, <laughs> yeah more success but uh, not so much passion i think not so much fun you know, not, I think not so I, much fun. There you go. Exactly, it. not so much fun. I think people, I think, you know, there's, there's something in being a West Ham fan in that we know, and it could be, um, you know, one of, you know, three of six clubs in the top six will beat that season. And it could be one year, it might be Arsenal, Man United, and Spurs. Next one might be Chelsea. And, but you know, it's going to happen. And those are like your, our, our cup finals you know we know yeah. we're going to so like in during restart you know obviously we played chelsea yeah. and i knew yeah. we were going to get something out of that game even before they kicked off it made no logical sense but west ham just just did at west ham you know and y yes Tom, west ham being west ham just like yes. we usually beat chelsea the other day and the other day we lost against Bournemouth or something yeah yeah exactly and so <laughs> it is, and we know it's going to happen and it infuriates us and it makes us really yeah. you know us all up but then next saturday we'll be 
going there again you know it's yeah. it's like you literally sit down on a saturday night you've lost in the uk i've deleted you know my match of the day recording because i don't want to watch that because we've lost and then sunday get the newspaper open now oh, oh we've got oh we've got um you know, I don't know. We've got we've got Leeds next week. Oh yeah, looking forward to Leeds. It's, like, it's just like it's like a roller coaster. And yeah. sometimes you and sometimes you get two or three games in a row where you might win, and it's like oh, yeah. but you're waiting for the drop. You're waiting yeah, for us come. to lose, lose to Southampton five nil or something. You know it's going to happen, and yes. uh, that's why I love it. That's why I really love it. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I've missed. I've really missed that sort of. But, but, but it really feels like coming home when I come to see West Ham. I love it. Yeah, it feels like coming home. People yeah. are so nice, and everyone is just so happy. Well, the West Ham family. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true, and even more so, you know, because obviously everyone interacts nicely on, you know, particularly at the moment on Twitter and Facebook, and there's lots of, you know, the, the banter. I think is 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 more than it has been because obviously no one's been at the, at the games themselves. So it's yeah. um it's nice. It's you, you see it all, and I'm very fortunate that I've been accepting to certain, you know, private Facebook groups and stuff like that, which I haven't been before, and it's lovely to see all the interaction and stuff and keep everyone going. Um, right, okay, let let's go on to the Hammers Eleven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, as as you know, that the whole idea is we get we get everyone, we, every guest we come on, bar Harry Redknapp and Ian Bishop, um, <laughs> um, to to give their eleven. So the idea is, the only rule is really you have to be alive to a scene and play, not seen live, because actually that that massively reduces your pool if that's the case. But being alive <laughs> yeah. to see play, um, yeah. but apart from that, you can do and talk about whoever you want. There's yeah. no real. It's not about the best players. It's not about the. It's it's up to you, whoever you want to talk about. Yeah. Um. Because obviously like they make an impression, whether it's positive or negative. We've had some negative ones, and that's the whole idea of the channel. Um, yeah. And so goal. we will start off in goal. Who yeah. have we got in goal for the Nielsen eleven? We've got a Spaniard. Oh, Adrian. Oh, I thought it was going to be Roberto. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not mental. <laughs> I'm Swedish. I'm not <laughs> mental. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the difference? No, uh, joking. No, but honestly, <laughs> honestly, here's your passion. But yeah. I had a difficult, uh, difficult time choosing the goalkeeper actually because we have had decent goalkeepers the last 15, 20 oh, years. Oh. Shaka Hislop, Robert Green, mm. Jose Jaskolainen, Adrian, Darren Randolph, Lukas Fabianski. It's been good. Mm. I like them. I like them all. I, I, I don't. I think that's one area we we we've never. There was a period. It probably is well. Just as you were start, you know, it's a period around sort of the the sort of the two. I think about two thousands ish, or just before actually, where we had a lot of lone goalkeepers. So we had um, Bernard Lamar. We had and lots lots of these ones who did bit players, and then obviously yeah. then but then from then on, we yeah. had. A, a great and you said goalkeepers are not is not usually a position we we our number ones are usually very good not necessarily number twos roberto but a number ones are usually very good and uh yeah, yeah. yeah. and adrian right. is obviously brilliant. adrian was not uh, probably his best goalkeeper but he had great reflexes then he did some stupid yeah. things <laughs> every once, once in a while but but he was he was an artist i liked him <laughs> he was an the artist passion he like showed that. against everton in the fa cup oh, yeah, yeah i liked him it was brilliant and and the way he just did that you know they did the right <laughs> gloves off you know yeah. such a, like an iconic moment in that sort of yeah, exactly second. um that he'll always yeah. remember and obviously he's a he's a premier league winner as well yeah yeah i, I give him that really yeah. nice for him yeah it was good it was, it, it, i think everyone was pleased for him because he was a nice yeah. guy and yeah, um, well, absolutely every good and he, he left as i said he left in the right way so i'm just gonna move my camera down a bit yeah. he he, yeah, he yeah. left in the right way didn't he as people say yeah. so he, he um, didn't betray us in any way no no he just he's like look i want to this is what i want this is the money i want we weren't going to give it to him all right well i'll get yeah, somewhere and, else then. and he, and he understood enough. he couldn't beat uh, fabianski no nah, exactly i mean fabianski was, was a, he's a fantastic fantastic yeah, goalkeeper he's really good really good right and, uh, to be fair fabianski is better but, uh, oh yeah, he's a, yeah, he's technically he's a better goalkeeper, yeah, but it's not about better. that. It's oh. for your team. It's not about that. You know, some people do yeah, technically yeah, exactly, the better players, exactly. but for exactly. you, it's your eleven, and you talk about yeah, who exactly. You're about. But but I think it's more fun if I take someone who I actually have a relationship. Totally. To the, 
because it's your hammers. It's your hammer. Yeah, it's so my hammer. Of course, but <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not the people watching. It's your hammers. And that's what's quite yeah, nice. Exactly. Since I think we've had about a hundred and almost a hundred, maybe even a hundred over a hundred and fifty now. Um, guests, and it's it, everything. Everyone is. You know, it's yeah. It's quite it's, boring it's if everyone bought the same. Exactly, and and if we just had, you know, what's your greatest eleven? Then and I didn't say, you know, you have to be alive to have seen and play. What's your greatest eleven all the time? Everyone would have the same bloody team. It would be part probably more Joe Porter, probably, Trevor yeah, Deacon, and so on, exactly. so on. Brilliant players, but no difference. I never saw, never saw. Right, okay. Adrian's in goal. You yeah. you talk about the team as you want to go through them. Just yeah, by. that would take uh, fullbacks. Yeah, the, sure. the right fullback uh, first of all. Sure. Go for it. Christian Daly. Christian Daly. Mm, nice. Yeah. I've got to type that in now. No, you're not the first. They, uh, no, you might be the first one, but he's not. Uh, so much so I've had to type him in. So that's always a sign. He's not that regular. But Christian Daly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why Christian Daly then, Jesper? Yeah. <laughs> Did over 100 matches for the club. And uh, honestly, to, to be really fair, since him, we haven't really got a really good right back. Yeah. Uh, oh, of course, Lucas Neal was decent. Different. But, Different, but, yeah. but since then, we have... It's a position we really struggle with. Yeah, it's true. But, but it's I think true. Christian Daly was... It was uh, I liked him. He was a gentleman, wasn't he? Just, yeah. He was, he, was, he was solid. He, he'd get a goal. He was a good captain as well during yeah. that sort of promotional side, really, um, uh, and a couple of years promotional side because obviously we, we didn't go up the first time, we went up the second time. And he had a good song, and I love yeah. a player who has a good song. Yeah, Do you know, there's a certain type of player. You have to be a certain type, whether it's um, you're you're a cult hero like Christian Daly arguably was, yeah. or you're technically one of the best players in the world. Like a exactly, player. So like, you have uh, to have yeah. a song. And he yeah. had a song, and yeah. and that already puts him yeah. in the upper echelons. Exactly, yeah. it makes him part of the uh, part of the fan base. Exactly, you know I mean? and they still sing the song anyway. So that's always yeah. that always that always shows him. Does and, like uh, the Cresswell song. Still yeah. strong though. Tom King, Tom King's left. <laughs> right. Okay. Christian Daly's in. Who is next? Then Jesper. The Terminator. Julian uh, Dix. Yeah, Julian. Good old Dixie. I don't think that is so big surprise. Of course, no. I'm a bit too young to really, really have a relation to him. But he was a character, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was a character. And you, I mean, to, to be honest, as I said, it, yeah, you had to be alive to see them play. And so Julian was yeah. playing when he was alive. And yeah, you're exactly. right. And um, and you know, he, and obviously he have been around more for his second spell at the club. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, he yeah. is the most picked person we have and there's a reason <laughs> but there's a reason for that isn't it you yeah. don't you know you've had 150 people i know 80 i know 70 percent i don't know the top of my head have picked him there's a reason why that happens yeah you know well he's a western fella isn't he yeah he is i mean he's the coach of the team it makes it he's, he makes a good spell for the club i like yeah. him he is and and honestly since him we have struggled to left back also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Cresswell was good for two seasons, but then after the injury, <laughs> he wasn't really himself. Never came back the same player, did he? To be honest, no, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, no, course, Julian. The, yeah. The free kick at Man United were brilliant. I saw it, but the, yeah, but not that level. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And you're right. After Julian, no. we were fortunate. And, so was... and I liked George McCartney as well. Linda, solid. Yes, yeah, he was a solid, solid player, wasn't he? He was always like a a six, a seven out of ten. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't spectacular, yeah, exactly. no, but he was. But he didn't decent. make any mistakes. Yeah, decent, and he'd always be solid. And I think sometimes you want you need a balance, don't you, from the guys who are seven out of tens to the guys who maybe a nine one week, maybe a six the other week. You know, you need a balance yeah, in a team, don't yeah. you? And yeah, um, I think so. yeah, but I'm um, Julian Dix. Yeah, and obviously he'll be back at the London Stadium next year with yeah. Slaven. With West Brom, yeah. so yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good to see him yeah. back, and obviously Scott Parker as well. We'll be back with Fulham. Yeah. Um, okay, Julian's in. Uh, centre backs, yeah. Speaking of Slaven and Billet, ah, I want to speak of his biggest mistake. Okay, 
he let go, go of James Tompkins. Oh, I so see. And James Tompkins. You te- teased my... me then. <laughs> you teased me. I was going to put Slavin Village, but you went James Tompkins. Ah. Yeah. You teased, Jesper. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, it was unpredictable. Um, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I I was a big fan of Super Tanks. Really? Yeah, I really. It, childhood a friend of Mark Noble. And actually, I think we wasted his talent by playing him at the right back sometimes. I don't think he really got the opportunity to show how good he could be. No, I agree. He, he he had to he had to fill in at right back, didn't he? Unfortunately, and uh, and again, it's it's what you said before. You know, we don't have we haven't been blessed with loads of right backs in the modern era, and so much so that you have to play a centre back at right back. Yeah, it doesn't really help, and, does it? Yeah, and actually, James Tompkins scored the last FB Cup goal ever at the bowling ground. Of course, ah, very good, very good. Yes, he's um. I think it's uh, it's a shame because it was one of those things where when, when we sold him, he we then needed a. If I remember that, then we had a couple of injuries, so he would yeah. have had an extended run in the game in the team. Otherwise, yeah, yeah exactly. those things, isn't it? It's yes. typical. I suppose it was let go because of uh, Collins and Reed was very good at the moment. But yeah, and they'd spent money on them both, haven't they? And yeah, Tompkins yeah, was, and, uh, and they were good. No doubt about yeah. it. But, uh, they were strong, strong pairing, and um, yeah, really solid. It was just a shame. It's, you're, I, I agree. It was a shame. We could have, we could. I mean, the amount of times where we've struggled a little yeah. bit of centre back. Uh, and I love our own, our own guys. Yeah, the Duke Academy. Yeah. Definitely. No, I get that. Yeah. And and who's um, who's James Tompkins going to partner in the central defence positions? Then just yeah, uh, I actually just mentioned him. He scored the last ever goal at. Bowling ground, Winston oh, Reed. Reed. Good old Reedo. Eh? Yeah, I like him. I like yeah. him a lot. Solid player. You know, yeah. I just think and he's... he and he made a very decent run in the championship. He mm. and Tompkins were n- <laughs> crucial, crucial to us giving going up of the year. Oh, definitely, and 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 that made him as a player that that sort of championship era. Yeah, in that he 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 basically um. You know, when when he signed for us, obviously just after the World Cup, and he was he didn't really adjust well to the the Premier League. No, Going no. down, he was at a slightly slower pace, slightly yeah. you know poorer standard of football. But he established himself really well, and obviously then when yeah. we went up, he you know as I said, you know, you know there was rumours of Liverpool and Arsenal after him, yeah. you know, and and they they're, they're not uh, they're not they're not crap teams, you know what I mean? So it must yeah, be exactly. something. And I I would give him a testimonial. Well, he is his testimonial. He is his tenth year. We signed him yeah. in 2010, didn't we? After yeah. the World Cup, and ten years. Yeah, he's ten years. Yeah. Albeit he probably never played. I mean, someone yeah, I think I was listening to um, the West Ham Way podcast the other day, and they mentioned that it's been two years since he's last played for the club. Uh, yes, that's uh, a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, all right, not the testimonial then. But <laughs> but he was crucial in us giving up and establish us again in the Premier League. Oh, totally. Absolutely. And totally. that was very, very important for the club. It was. It was desperate. We desperately needed it. And uh, yeah. I just think he's he's one of those guys who... Um, and it was, I, it's funny because you mentioned someone like James Collins. And James Collins pl- argued yeah. played for us for less time, in theory, on the books. But there's a, a deeper affection between the fans and Collins as as there is there's less less of a, an affection between Reed and the fans. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah. I think it's, it's perhaps been... that's a reason why I didn't choose uh, James Collins because I Maybe. wanted to give Winston Re- Reed some yeah. credit. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that totally. I think it's just because the nature of Winston Reed. He was you know he was an, he's a Kiwi, quite quiet, well mannered. Came from Denmark. You know, he yeah. wasn't like a, he wasn't like a, you know, no, a, no, a Welsh, exactly. a Welsh no. brave, you know, lion, no, a you ginger know, like, pal, <laughs> exactly, exactly, and uh, it's just and interesting. I love James Collins as well. Not the bad yeah, thing. yeah, no, I, I, I love him, but it's just interesting to see how, how different players yeah, yeah. get a different aff- aff- affection with, with some fans, um, yeah. and and yeah, someone like someone like a, we, a Rido, um, 
I mean, yeah, he's been, it's just, again, he's mentioned about Cresswell. He's just savaged by injury, wasn't he, unfortunately? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a terrible shame. But, uh, yeah. right, okay, Winston Reid is in. Midfield. Let's go into midfield. God, who are you going to start with? Yeah, I got five midfielders. Oh. I like Let's it. start with the central. Go for it. And this is also a guy we mentioned. He will come back to London State this season. Ah, okay. Scott Parker. Scotty P. I love that. Yeah. No, I do. I, I really, really, really like like Scott Parker. And I'm really, really happy that it's all worked out from Fulham. Yeah, me too. Because uh, he uh, just seems brilliant. Yeah, I actually hope he one day would be our manager. I think I a lot of people Henry do Poe's that. Noise. Yeah, I think I, I, you would you would imagine, you would hope that people that that you know people who who make these decisions are looking, you know, a lot of pla- a lot of man a lot of clubs have this sort of you know five year plan. Looking at it yeah. next, who's going to be next? Who's going to be next? Who's being yeah. next? Clearly, David Moyes at the moment, in my opinion, he's doing this sort of foundation building yeah. exercise, making sure we've got the right scouts, the right coaching staff, the right systems in place, the, 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 the you know, all the transfer stuff yeah. and the analytics, and you know, and I think that was the trouble with with the Pellegrini experiment in that we, yeah. you know, you can't build a house. It doesn't matter how fancy it is, if the foundations aren't good, it will crumble. Yeah. And that's unfortunately yeah. what happened, I think, with us. Pellegrini didn't yeah. put those foundations in place. He go, he went in in the same way that he would go into a Man City or yeah, when exactly. he's going, and everything's done for him. He's got the coaching yeah. staff, he's got, the, yeah. the, and that doesn't happen at yeah. West Ham. No. Um, now, Scott Parker, I would love, I think, you know, yeah, I, th- I, I think I, he I knows love, the club. Yeah. And I think. And and it, it really, really, really winds me up when people don't rate Scott Parker yeah. because he, you know, because he went to Tottenham, yeah. because he went to Tottenham, it, and it's ridiculous. I, yeah, I had I a massive so. rant the other day yeah. about it because it's just it winds me up knowing because it's ridiculous because he literally carried West Ham for yes. well for two seasons. Obviously, the third season yeah. went down. And yes, um, but he, he almost saved us by his own, by himself, by himself. How many years, three years in a row? Look at other people who bought, we've won it three years in a row. You're looking at, you know, your Billy yeah. Bonds and Bobby Moores and, and yeah. people like that. And, you know, even Mark Noble hasn't won it three years in a row. You know, and, and he's Mr. West Ham, you know, yeah, exactly. it really, really, really winds me up. I have yeah. to, I have to, yeah. I have to no, bite my tongue sometimes. Then you forget how brilliant he was, how brilliant oh. he cared for the club. He cared for the club. Yeah. And he, he, didn't, he, did. he didn't betray us either. No, he didn't. He went to go. And he, he never spoke to... bad about us or, some, no. or anything. He was a top lad. Top lad. No. Super Scotty uh, Parker. No, go on, Cameron. Cameron, you saying? Uh, super Scotty Parker. To yeah. Talk about songs. Super, super Scott, super Scotty Parker. Exactly, exactly, and also, you know, I think someone mentioned it was Stevie Warboys when I interviewed him. He, he said there was, you know, he read something about his his dad had passed, and he was a Tottenham fan, and he'd wanted to go and play for Tottenham while his dad was, you know. And it's like, well, fair enough, you know. what I mean, it's not like it's, you know, it's it's a bit. And I think the trouble is, I think there's a disconnect between how. You know, for for younger fans, I think they realise a little bit more that actually, yeah, key, you know, people. If you get three years, four years out of a player, you've done really well. Yeah. You know, yeah. back in the day, back in the Bonds era, it was twenty years. Everyone had a testimony. It was always ten years. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. Mark Noble is the. Oh, I've gone. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I've gone. Don't matter. Uh, <laughs> Mark right. Noble is. Not only is the exception to the rule, it's just my uh, my webcam. So like, Mark Noble is the exception to the rule. He's not the. Um, why has it gone on airplane mode? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's the exception to the rule. I'm going back on in a minute. Here we go. Uh, there he is. Yeah. Hey. Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry, I'm just going to put this back into my holder. Yeah, he's <laughs> the exception to the exception to the rule so you know for it's not no, i think people worry about that too much you know worry about mark yeah. noble um oh we should have another mark noble and we shouldn't and and the influence of scott parker and mark noble and in, is is if it weren't for if it weren't for scott parker we wouldn't have mark, uh, mark noble that we do now um and similarly you know if we didn't have scott parker we might not have had mark noble we might not have had a declan rice because declan's learning from mark and mark look you know, it's, exactly. it's a circle 
Akuna yeah. Matata sort of served a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And um, no, I'm a he's, I'm a huge fan of his, and I, I was delighted to see him do well at Fulham, and yeah. and just see all the you know, and then when he did his speech afterwards, and it was like you know dubbed yeah. with the streets. It was very funny, but you just felt that he really, really wanted it and you just feel that passion and that's what West Ham fans want they want not managers with passion that's why I call like Moisey yeah, yeah, because exactly. he's got a bit of oomph about it, you know yeah, what I mean he's, yeah. and yes and that's what, exactly what Pellegrini didn't have no and Slav as well to be to be yeah, fair oh, it, was, it was wonderful it was wonderful to see him he cared. lovely it was lovely yeah he was but he just that he wouldn't he and he cared about winning but he didn't think that he would go into the dressing room at half time and rip shreds out of it out of the players you've always thought he's you know one of those oh i want to be your mate oh, i want to yeah. be you know yeah, like, i, I love when he kissed when he kissed him at <laughs> exactly and things like that you know but i just don't and i think for west ham fans they like to see particularly now with like Stuart pierce in the in the um in the playing staff as well as kevin nolan we've yeah. got some really scary characters if you don't perform at half time and you go in and you know you've got those three <laughs> and, and alan irvine he's he's not he's not shy in coming forward you're uh, you're in for it you know and if it means that we get a team <laughs> together of people who are going to be you know, of players who are going to give their all. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I think we we've been a couple of years a bit 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 fancy Danish, a bit sort of fluffy. We all want, I want to be nasty. You know, I want to be a nasty team that people are a little bit scared of us. You know, yeah, um, so. and we're doing it more. You know, you can see the influence yeah. of Kevin yeah, Nolan. You shouldn't enjoy playing West Ham. You should be scared of us. Oh no, it's exactly. <laughs> they should know they're in for a bit of a tussle, and you see yeah. that. Uh, um, since restart, the corners. That's 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 what I've been. Kevin Nolan always, and I went back and watched oh. some highlights because I wanted to check. Was it him? He was always the man who stood right by the goalkeeper and blocked him. You watch it now. He was always the man, or or next to the goalkeeper, and and was really sort of like digs his elbow in. Oh, what am I doing, ref? You know, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just standing in. <laughs> and now he's passed that on to Mikel Antonio. He does that, and he's got a real low centre of gravity. He's really hard to push over, and so uh, it's really funny. It's really funny the influence. And if it means that Stuart Pearce comes in and makes our defence a little bit tougher, a little bit nastier. I'm all for that because I just think we need that yeah. and we need to be a bit more nastier. Anyway, yeah. Scott Parker. Scott Parker's in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's in. Who's next? And Who's next? Next this, player is, if I do this. Oh, the man. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Kevin Nolan. Good shout. Good shout. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, the same we just talked about. The passion. Yeah. And he was yeah. also crucial in the championship and being a established Premier League team again. Definitely, definitely. Great he captain. was a good, yeah, proper captain. It was. He was also important for Mark Noble, I think. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Mark Noble. He learned a lot. From Mark. Mark learned a lot for him in terms of how to be a captain. That's for sure. Um, I think also he's he he was a lot. He's very underestimated. Um, yeah. And and clearly because he was Sam's man. He yeah. had a really good link between the manager and the players. Obviously. And that makes Obviously. a huge difference. Yes, of course. Huge but difference. he was crucial. And he had and a great just, celebration. And just, he was, yeah, I loved it. But he was great for Newcastle. And then yeah. he comes to West Ham in Championship. And that was brilliant. Yeah. Of it course, right. he wouldn't yeah. have come if it wasn't for Big Sam, obviously. No. But of course, he came. You know. Yeah. Exactly, and and although the thing about the chicken dance, and the thing, and it, and I'm surprised, um, I'm really surprised Antonio hasn't done it yet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's it's, yeah, it's yeah, so he, it's almost too obvious. But you know he, what I mean? He, he has other things. <laughs> like just go like yeah. even even the Norwich game. What he said, he scored four. You know, he could have gone over and just done it. Oh, it would have been lovely, Antonio. Oh, yeah. hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, I'm surprised. Oh my god! It. I just wait, wait to see what's coming with him and his yeah. celebrations. <laughs> oh, He's good. I, I, I do like lad. it. You know, because because uh, that sort of, that whole sort of yeah, you're right. Sort of doing the goal celebrations. That's that somewhat was a become a lost art, really, wasn't it? No, yeah. no one really took much. It used to be sort of around sort of the two. Th you know, I'm thinking like Rooney and Ke Robbie Keane, and you know they used to do all the celebration. You know, the celebrations or the flips and the all that type yeah. of stuff. And and no one sort of did it much. You know, and then Antonio sort of 
took it back a little bit and yeah. did like you know the macarena and the yeah and the exactly. little and homer the, simpson and, and, and yeah exactly that yeah. and that he did against tottenham i don't know what it was but it was like, oh, i the, loved it yeah, yeah exactly. he did like the gangnam style and stuff <laughs> what like was that. that but it was brilliant think, it's yeah it's, yeah it's 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 a lost start that i'm glad he's bringing yeah. back i'm glad he's scoring the goals to yeah. bring it back because that's the yeah. thing you have to score the goal before you can yeah. do a celebration yeah. he's obviously but confident he, enough yes and, and he has that thing as a striker when he got the opportunity he shoots and he scores yeah and he's yeah and in it's, recent recent time he's scored isn't he usually yeah. he and, yeah, and i think uh, well, yeah he, he's, he's very unpredictable as a player yeah in that he i don't think he knows what he's doing sometimes do you know what <laughs> i mean probably I, not i remember uh, his his first goal against Southampton when he was uh, had the ball kicked in his head and it uh, bumped in <laughs> brilliant goal yeah. but i don't know how he did it <laughs> and not yet needed with him <laughs> all right okay we'll put kevin nolan yeah, yeah kevin nolan <laughs> I, love, I love i love these sort of these sort of diversions when we do yeah, videos. Yeah. right okay Besides kevin nolan's in who yeah. is yeah. next uh -huh. we have talked about him mr west ham number 16 mark noble ah oh, mark noble can't make an I, 11 I like, I like the way I like the way you introduce them Jess it's got a bit of a Eurovision about them you know it's like uh, it's like <laughs> and the scores from Sweden Mark Noble 16 <laughs> yeah exactly you know I'm from Sweden we got Abba I know exactly Mark Noble what a man what a guy yeah well simply brilliant I love yeah. him and since Fantastic. he is not the best footballer obviously no. but he's and got he the passion it. he's got and he makes his teammates better exactly and that's and that's the key you know he he gets to um he he enables other players to play do you know what i mean he enables declan rice and he enables suchek and and this sort of new role this number 10 role that Moyes has put him in you know if you told declan it to mark noble rather two years ago yeah, you're going to be playing number 10 uh it'd be like what <laughs> but it just works. It just his his presence yeah. on the pitch is 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 worth so much. And I think even yeah. he on the pitch, just being there, just his presence makes a big difference. Not only for yeah. the players, but I think for the fans as well. Because it's you know it's really unusual to have a player in your team a who's played five hundred games is one man club, but b is the captain and c is a genuine fan. Do you know mm. what I mean? He's a genuine yeah. West Ham fan. Exactly. And exactly. and we, he he lives our life our our boyhood dreams every day, yeah. You yeah. Know, for five hundred and two games he's done it, yeah. And yeah. I just find him and and since restart I've had this newfound respect for him because you know I've, I've obviously I'm I'm at, I'm at the grounds and I've said it on on countless videos and when he's not playing you see him and he literally yeah. kicks because he sits up by the where the disabled area is and he literally kicks every ball just the same as you would do every yeah. game you watch and um it's a, it's it's lovely to see you think here's yeah. a guy who's on christ knows we're on 60 grand maybe i don't know a week and and he cares about his club so much that he's still even though he's not playing yeah. he's kicking every ball and i love him absolutely he's a love him. yeah and it just makes a massive deal difference it's very unusual to see such players mm. play they're usually on the terrace watching the oh, team supporting yeah, exactly he's on the pitch yeah and that's why the that's why uh, and you know and and someone mentioned him the other day when he was a capping conversation you know he's played you know 500 odd games he's played under six or seven different managers most of them have made him captain or, or he's been start you know it's it's not just one person one pl one manager who likes him every manager knows his yeah. value yeah exactly. um, and his exactly. importance um and I just think he's brilliant, and yeah. it's going to be a terrible shame when he retires. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll I hope lose that. he will be a coach to have some kind of role in the club. I think he has to, doesn't he? I think I yeah, think you know we have to. to. It's so unusual to have a player like that, and obviously people have been you know obviously the whole thing with David Silva and Man City going to put like a statue up there of him, and, and everyone's like saying, oh, well, you know, Mark Noble should have one. Well, not really, because I don't because you know he's he's one he's one of the list of legends that are there. You know, he his name gets added to that list. It gets yeah. named in the same breath as. 
Bobby Moore, Trevor Brookin. Although you know, although Mark never won, hasn't well. Hopefully, hopefully this year maybe he might win something. Um, <laughs> hasn't won know, anything. Um, no. we, can, we can we can dream. Um, yeah, but that's... just for his sheer commitment to the club. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. No, of, of course you can't compare him to Bobby Moore or Trevor Brookin. No, you can't. But but he's done a decent job. Oh no, not the decent, the brilliant job for the club. Or week Definitely. in, week out. But uh, maybe not a statue. No, no, maybe not a statue. And also, because it's but, quite small, it looked it look really weird if you get like, because you know, <laughs> everyone else, but like if you got a Phil Park statue and then get involved. I, I think that's what I think that's a great thing. Again, I think it's something Dave said on, on the West Way podcast. They should do that, you know, like they do at Arsenal, don't they? They have like the statues around yeah. the stage, around the outside of the like Dennis Bergkamp and Omri. And yeah, and yeah and it's, that's, that's lovely, but you have to do it yeah. for everyone. You couldn't just do it for Mark. But um, yeah. yeah, no, right. Okay, so Mark's in, and that's that's. Yeah. Three midfield. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who's next? Yeah, uh, the attacking wingers. Oh, okay. Here we go. Start off with another West Ham academy player, Joe Cole. Yeah, good shout. Let me find Joe. Yeah, Joe Cole. Yeah. He never Top abandoned guy. us. No, he didn't. And he came back, and he talked well about us in front of other other when he played yeah. for other clubs. He always checked out how. Uh, how West Ham have played, what happened. He talked well about the club. Mm. Top lad. Top player, yeah. And and you're right, he, he he bookended his career, as I say, at West Ham. Um, but again, West Ham, his family are West Ham fans. You know, he comes from that fam, you know, West Ham fan family. And yeah, to Joe's credit, I'm not being funny. We ever, like most West Ham fans knew about him from about the age of like 13, you know, and it's like, it's so much pressure on a, on a lad, you know, when we, yeah. we signed him on, you know, he signed these professional things on the pitch, uh, ironically against Chelsea, I remember. Um, but he had so much pressure. But he was a beautiful player when before he before yeah. he got ru- I think he got ruined a bit at Chelsea. He got put into you know with a player like Joe Cole, you can't put him in a position. You've just got to let him just play. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. no, you, you should, don't get... you should control him. You should release him. Exactly, it's totally true, Jesper. Totally true. You don't have nowadays. You don't have the the free role. Do you remember they used to have a free like yeah. player was given a free role, um, like Matt Latizier, and and then they were given this free role. But like, you don't get it in the modern football. Everything's too sort of decompartmentalized. You know, everyone has their own positions. Um, but yeah, I think I think Joe was. I reckon Joe. If Joe'd come along about three or four, about maybe even five years earlier, he would be. Well, in the same breath as as your, you know, as as, as you know, the, the modern the that era equivalent of a Messi or something like that, because he would have been in a different era where he could play and just yeah. express himself rather than be put on the left wing like like Jose did yeah. and in England and um, yeah. no, it's lovely yeah, lovely bloke Sweden as well. At World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. actually, I support the West Ham players at World Cup. So it, really, so when but he, he scored... didn't play at West uh, West Ham at the moment, so that, that yeah. was um... <laughs> no, I don't mind. Actually, yeah. So when he scored for England for England against was it against Sweden, wasn't it? I believe he scored that. Yeah, epic. yeah. He sort of ruined until two minds because he wasn't really a West Ham player then. Um, but, but honestly, but... as as long as West Ham players scores, I'm happy. Yeah. Oh, cool. Very good. Very good. Uh, there there hasn't, hasn't been many Swedish West Ham players, though, have they? Um, you haven't had many, have we? We no, had uh, Freddie Youngberg. Uh, <laughs> Freddie Youngberg. <laughs> and then we had uh, Seat Haxabanovic. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And but it, um, never that good. And ah, what's his name? Oh, no, he used to play. Ah, it's going to really annoy me. He played for Everton as well. Is it Nicholas Alexanderson? Uh, Alexanderson, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he play, he he was obviously, but for, you know, probably yeah. probably more than probably Hexavanovic and and Freddie Lundberg yeah. put together in terms of time. Yeah, club, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Not long. There was yeah. a rumor once he was going to get Ibrahimovic once, wasn't there? There was yeah, a rumor that would have once. been something <laughs> that would have just taken you over the edge, wouldn't it? Really, to be honest. Yeah, but, uh... Honestly, I would love it. <laughs> would love it. <laughs> right. Okay. Joe Cole is in. Who do yes. you have that's next? Who's next for you? I think it's the best player I've ever seen in West Ham. The snake. Sure. Dimitri the Pyatt. Snake. Yeah. And you see, that's what I mean about what we're saying about Scott Parker. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Someone like Dimitri Payet, everyone goes, oh, I'm not going to put him in. He might, he's a snake. Or, but like, he, he yeah. you know, he was just, it's just so funny how people react differently yeah. to different people. Yeah, but, yeah. but what he did for Payet. that one oh, season exactly. oh, was brilliant. He was incredible so player. good. It's just a shame that uh, he left as he did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but that season, he was brilliant. Mm. He was. I mean, he, uh, I've never okay, seen man. such a great talent in the club. No, best best player I've ever seen in a West Ham. Technically, the best player, not the best, not the best player in a very commas, but technically the best player I've ever seen at West Ham. Yeah. And um, what I, but then, and and the trouble is with those types of players, those mercurial players, you know, there's another side to them. Yeah. And. You know, he came to us doing the same thing that he left us with. So he yeah. he basically went on strike at Marseille and made them sell us and basically made the, the sort of the the transfer go through. And then he did the reverse and goes back there. You know, so it's just it's it's um it was a shame, but it, just for that last season, what he, what he gave us in terms yeah. of just and he gave just the amazing. bowling ground a true farewell. Yes. Exactly. It wouldn't. We wouldn't have had that season. It wouldn't have been so magical if it wasn't no. for Payet. No, and I think no we doubt. should it's remember bad. that. And people do. I mean, he 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 appears really, really regularly in people's elevens, and yeah. but they always preface him like you do, and they said, "Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. the snake, yeah. Dimitri Payet." Yeah. Clearly, it really, it it hurts a lot. It hurts thinking about that. The press conference on Slavan Bilic said, "It's Dimitri Payet. He didn't want yeah. to play for the club." It's just. Oh no! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? But you get that it's like you know. But when you that, was and... gone after the the Euros, yeah, I mean, we were gonna, we was, you know, we thought, you know, we are Madrid were gonna buy him for like seventy million, and you know, yeah. like, God, okay, or Liverpool or something like that, and yeah. we get that, you get that with Paya and, and those type of players, and our Nautovic's, and you know, yeah. our, our, one of you know, in, in my opinion, the greatest players ever play at West Ham. We only got that player because he pushed over a referee, you know, in terms of Di Canio. And, and it's like things like that, you know, people forget things like that. It's funny, you know. But, um, yeah, it's really funny. But Dimmy Pyatt, we'll put Dimmy in. And and who's uh, who's the last piece of the pie? It, it's not Di Canio. It's, Good, uh, I like it. It's Carlos Tevez. Ah, oh, Carlitos. Yeah, Carlitos it's... Tevez. Uh, I like liked him. The yeah, player. just did one season. Yeah, but the, he did save us that particular season. And well, we went down a couple of seasons later, so it didn't really matter so much. Pretty but long, it was yeah. fun, yeah. and the way he met us when we played against him later on, he did cross yeah. his hand as he did show respect. Well, he, he almost he, apologized for scoring against us. I loved yeah. it. It was nice yeah. to see. And he basically reinvented the crossed hammers, didn't he? Because no one did yeah. it until... Well, they did it in the 70s. I've got pictures of people in the 70s days. But I don't remember ever doing it until Carlos Tevez started doing it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and it's yeah, bizarre because yeah, yeah. he did it playing for Man United. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's really, a really, really strange thing. Yeah, it was lovely to see him. So I like that guy. Yeah. I suppose a lot of people take the canyon in this alone, but I, I thought I should have picked someone else. No, I think you pick who you want to pick, Jasper. That's, that's yeah. Right. yeah. But, but and, I want to almost for the same reason that I didn't pick uh, James Collins. I wanted to give some credit to Carlos Tevez. Yeah, no, I think Carlos. I think he 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 was. He, there's not many foreign-based players, particularly, who just get West Ham, and he and he just uh, you know he just seen. I don't know whether it was because it was yeah. You know, you know, predominantly of a working class fan base and yeah, exactly. he came from the favela you know it's like you know it was like it he was saw like some... he understood yeah and 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 you know he was in the paper a few few months ago saying you know he was like 36 now or something like that and yeah. if, he said the only team who'll play again in europe would be west ham it's like okay it's a bit mad. <laughs> you know you've played for juventus and you've played yeah. for man city and man you, you won the league yeah, exactly. and you know and, and and stuff like that but no you're you're your one season at West Ham playing under Alan Pardew and Gallen Kirbishley um, <laughs> is, is the one that you cherish the most. 
but um, <laughs> you gotta love him. You gotta love players. Yeah, like that, I it? think so. Yeah, and he's just one. Of, I just he, he was just an infectious player, and he was one of those players who you really rooted for when he came. Yeah. When he came in, he he tried to do everything, and it just didn't work. And and pars, yeah. it, it, it didn't work as a manager and and player combo. Curbs came in and he was like, literally, you know, you stay up there and don't worry about running back. And just when you get the ball, you be, you know, do what you do. Um, and and he was, I remember there was a long period he didn't score and he was like hitting the post or it was getting tipped over or as a bobble. And then when he scored that goal, at the top of that free kick and just the mm. sheer release out of him was just incredible. Yeah. And you just like... Such and he jumps in the crowd, and you know, it was just a, a wonderful moment. And then he just goes in this like scoring spree, you know, and it just like yeah. the whole team yeah, sort of like it, it, it re rejuvenated, yeah. yeah. But, um, no, it's a great player. But the, sadly, afterwards, striker position has been a big struggle, yes, yeah, it has been. It has we been need a, a proper goal scorer to take the next, next step. Oh, we know, yeah, and that's the thing. We just, I think, you know, it's. I, I think there's, yeah, I think, you know, we. That's that's the area and the fullbacks where I think we really haven't had got a consistent answer. Do you know what I mean yeah. for that position? We'd have a good, yes. Yeah, so at the moment, Antonio's a bit of a, but he's not yeah, really yeah. a striker. I mean, you know, he's no, 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 really he's a winger, a, really. Yeah, and exactly, and exactly. he's just played that position. It's just worked for him. He'll get found out next season because it's not it's not rocket science what he's doing. He's staying up front. We and then we lump lump it up there, and he's a big yeah. enough boy to to he's move. There, so. Yeah, he's but just powerful. The, but the, but the, that's simply everything. Then I love yeah. I love the fella. It's not that. But oh the, yeah. But the, he's not the, that kind. Of, right. I don't think and, he will score twenty goals in the season. No, he won't. And and it's like you know when we signed um, Ticharita, I thought, oh this is it. Yeah. This is yeah. our. And he just didn't just didn't work, and it's like you know he, he was he wasn't the same player that he left the club that he, yeah. that he left England for. You yeah. know he, when he was at Leverkusen, yeah. he was scoring, but he exactly. wasn't that. And it, it didn't really fit in the in the playing system. The way they played him, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Again, too often we buy players and we don't play them how we bought them, which yeah. makes no sense at all. It's like you exactly. know if you buy, I don't know if you've got a I don't know a. a a diesel car and you go and put unleaded petrol in there it doesn't work there's a reason yeah. why it's not built to work and it's like players players are built to work in certain places very few players i mean antonio is a little bit of an exception because he can you know he's played got right back he's played right wing left wing up front yeah. he's done the lot uh, which is very unusual most players have a position and they, they play that position so like Haller, for example Haller was yeah. we bought him on the on the strength of playing in the front three with rebic and Jovic, and, 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 and yeah. You don't play in front three. No, it's not, you know, it's like front three. You know, no, it's, exactly. not, it's not rocket science. No, no, exactly. It's and that's, that's a shame because Alaire is good for twenty goals. I'm sure of it. Yeah, yeah. But you he needs to fit it. in. He and when you play saw, a, you're right. a game that fits yeah. his style. You're totally right, and and you see that when he had like you know in that Southampton game just before. Yeah. Um, just before everything stopped, he had he it was him and Antonio as a two, and you saw just a different player. You saw, you know, he was the confidence was back. He didn't feel like he had to do all the. I mean, he someone he won like like he had like the, the most won the most aerial challenges in the Premier or some one of the yeah, top yeah, two. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so he wins them, but he wins them. But there's no one there to bloody flick them yeah. off to. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, exactly. but I hope I hope next year I hope him. Bowen and, and and Antonio, there's there's a three there which would terrify yeah. any defense. That, that any is defense. A attacking strike. Yeah, that's, that's the way it should be. Yeah, and that, then you've that, got absolutely, and then you've got Deck, you've got Suchek, and then if you need a bit more steel, yeah. Mark Noble goes in. If it's yeah. not a particularly but, but that, strong that team, is that is a good lineup? Oh yeah, it's a great lineup. It's a, I mean, you yeah. know. Uh, again, it was only because I was listening to it the other day, uh, the um, West Ham Way podcast. Dave yeah. said on there, Dave the next said on there, where he said, um, you know, if if we, yeah, we've got elite, yeah, if we don't finish top 10, you know, every season, we've got a top 10 squad, you know, and it's like, it's a disappointment. We'll probably finish 12th or 13th next season. That'd be a yeah. disappointment, but it shouldn't be. We should be top 10 and then looking yeah. to push on. That, if, you yeah. read, if you read our first team, if our first team, so you say, you know, played Fabianski, say you put, 
Cresswell in, you put Bonner, Diop, Johnson, Suchek, Bowen, uh, Suchek, um, Rice, maybe Noble or Fornells, yeah. and then Bowen, Haller, Antonio. That is a good team. Really that is good. A good team. Th- that, th- they are good for top seven. Yeah. Easily, and if but again, it's the it's the consistency, isn't it? It is. Yeah, we'll beat exactly. Chelsea and then lose yeah. to you know Burnley. <laughs> the West Ham way. It's the West Ham way. It's West Ham way. Anyway, anyway, Jess, thank you so much for your time. It's been thank lovely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. This this hour and the, five minutes has the pleasure has flown is all by. mine. No, not at all, and not at all. It's it's. I've, I've really really enjoyed. I hope it. you could understand me. Oh, of course, and I it's, and and what I love is is you hear and again it's the whole thing around interviewing foreign based fans. You hear the enthusiasm come through, and it's <laughs> lovely because it hasn't been beaten out of you yet. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's exactly. still it's still that enthusiasm that I used to have, and yeah, it's exactly. lovely. It just gets lifts me up because I was like, yeah, it's oh, not that bad. I'm glad you like it. I love it. I love it, man. And obviously, thank you, and obviously, thank you to everyone else for watching or, or listening. Thank you. Um, if you're thank watching you on YouTube, every guys. Yeah, thank you. If you're watching. watching on YouTube, obviously subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, pause, or, pause. all that, just subscribe to it all the time. Like, share, subscribe. And until next time, from me and Jasper, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Come on, you irons. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.